I never thought I'd see the day when people come for Hassan Minaj. He has been pretty much in brown America, America's sweetheart, right? Whether it's comedy, his personal life, his political life, uh, kind of as a journalist, things he's done in the White House, White House correspondence, the interviews he's had with Obama, has done no wrong. Am I the biggest Hassan Minaj fan? Hassan Minaj fan? Not really. I haven't gravitated much towards his comedy. Uh, it's a little bit different than the comedy that I like watching. Even he has said in one of his specials that he does PowerPoint comedy, which is like, okay, cool. You know, I think that's really cool that you address that. And it works, right? Between Patriot Act, uh, Homecoming King, and the King's Jest Jester. He's done pretty good. It works. And it's gotten him to that level where, you know, like obviously we have other brown comedians, Russell Peters, Aziz Ansari, a handful of others, but no one's really taken it to the level where he has. And I know Cal Penn has been in the White House, but not to where we've seen it as much on social media and in all other platforms like Hassan has done it. So what's the backlash? People are mad that he has been mm, fabricating. Nah, it's pretty much he's been making up stories for his comedy specials. Things that have been a little bit more graphic or the details that would kind of matter. So, for example, the one example that I saw uh, that people are a little bit more irate about is the envelope he received in the mail. He told a story about how he received an envelope in the mail. He opened it and a white powder substance came out and fell onto his daughter. I didn't know people open their mail right above their daughter's head, but this is what he said in the special, right? That this anthrax, quote unquote, like powder fell on his daughter and they had to rush to the emergency room and it ended up, she ended up being all right. Now to know that that was actually not true, that he did receive a piece of mail that did have some type of white powder substance, but it didn't even fall anywhere close to his daughter. For many of his fans, he has become an avatar for the power of representation and entertainment. This is true. I may not be the biggest fan, but he has been that dude for a while now. And am I mad that he's made up part of a story to kind of help propel a joke or a special? Not at all, man. I think what's worse is now he has to defend it, right? He has to be like, oh, you know, uh, I think comedy is a good mix of, actually, let me just quote it for you right here. My comedy Arnold Palmer is 70% emotional truth. This happened. And then 30% hyperbole, exaggeration, comma, fiction. It doesn't say comma. There's just actually a comma there. I don't care. Why are people mad about this? Like, I understand if he was like bad mouthing someone, right? Like if he was like, oh, my wife did this. And, you know, that part of it is made up because then it's kind of hurting someone's uh, like it's kind of defaming someone. But this is just an exaggeration of details that happen. And it's unfortunate he has to defend this. Right. Like we know comedians in general will exaggerate facts, will kind of add a little detail here and there. So, you know, the story sells. No one cares about what actually happened. All they care about is what you're telling me, what you're telling me to entertain me in this moment that I'm listening to you. I could sit on this podcast and just tell lies for about an hour and a half. You wouldn't care as long as it was entertaining. And he's trying to address the bigger picture, right? He's trying to address the whole like, hey, you know, like I was threatened by a piece of mail that possibly had anthrax, aka someone was trying to attack me or my family. No one knew if it was going to be him that opens that piece of mail. I wish some of you would start lying in your stories. Add a little lie. Add a little crazy detail and watch how much more interested that person listening gets. Instead of saying like, oh yeah, I went to the grocery store and got some apples next time be like yo i had to wrestle this old bitch for the last apple when i went to go check out the cashier had a gun i saved the day imagine how much more entertaining that is so why do we care about this little white lie 
What sucks is that now that he's addressed it in any future comedy special, it's going to be hard to believe anything he says, right? Where it's like, ah, you know, he's probably making that up. Ah, he's probably making that up. Luckily, he's at a stage of his career where he's kind of past the comedy specials, right? He He's now doing these um, almost like coffee in, what was that, what's that show called? Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. He, I haven't watched his new show where he interviewed Obama. I don't know any other interviews on there. But he's kind of past that stand-up phase. But, you know, it does suck that he has to address it in the first place.